If you love sketchbooks and yet you very well know that you will either never start them or get past the first pages, I'm going to share five tips that are going to help you to start one with the confidence that you can actually finish it, even as a perfectionist. Hi, I'm Françoise. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My first tip is going to be extremely shocking. You might even shake up the art world a little bit, but hear me out till the end. I think that as perfectionists, we need to let go of the idea that sketchbooks are for practicing only and that we shouldn't try to control the process or make them pretty, that it's okay to make a bunch of mistakes and so on. I know this is miles away from what we hear all the time, but this is a problem I've noticed with that. Hearing this has not helped me at all as a perfectionist. What I suspect is that we hear this so much and all the time that it almost doesn't make it okay to even start a sketchbook as a perfectionist. And I can speak for myself and say that I have felt shame and embarrassment to be such a control freak. To the point I was feeling ill at ease for a while that I would even attempt a medium like watercolor painting or just creating a sketchbook. Because starting one with this mindset of letting go can feel like it's just out of reach for some of us who just need to feel some control and who don't have the experience and confidence yet to fully experiment and actually let go more and more and more. So to be clear, I am not saying that to control everything all the time is awesome and the key to success in sketchbooks for perfectionists, not at all, and I'll touch on that more in depth later. I am saying to approach the sketchbook with a different angle and accept that there will be a want for control for a perfectionist and for things to look great. And in the beginning, that is probably needed to make some progress towards letting go more and more and more. And if you can relate to that, I'll link my website's homepage in the description of the video because the whole letting go trend bugged me so much for a long time that I shared about how I'm learning to lean into my perfectionism to serve my art instead of following standard advice and also how that has helped me. So if you want to learn more about it, you can go check it out. My second tip is to work with your perfectionism, but in the smart way. Because if you're like me, Chances are that you've tried to plan the whole sketchbook before even starting to make sure it looks cohesive and beautiful and to feel like you're prepared. The problem with this approach, I couldn't help but notice because I've done it so many times, is that you will create overwhelm for yourself by planning ahead like this. Most times, us perfectionists love to plan instead of doing the thing. We can waste a lot of time doing that so for me, for instance, it's been to gather a bunch of photos for the whole sketchbook, to sketch out all the thumbnails, to research all the things I wanted to include and so on. And I never had a problem doing that because I wasn't taking any risks while just researching and gathering info. I wasn't placing the first strokes on paper and risking a failed painting. And I would procrastinate a whole lot just by doing my research. And by the time I was done, the excitement of starting or just continuing the sketchbook was gone and I realized I had wasted all that time for nothing. In this Stillman and Burned sketchbook that I'm painting in now, I opened the first page, felt like painting a fish, and I did. I just did it. Then I wanted to paint dancers, and I am. So try and take it page by page or spread after spread. I'm trying that strategy now and it's really working for me to narrow all the thinking down to that page and no more. And this leads me to my third tip. And that is to avoid all the overthinking at all costs because I don't think it's to want to paint a pretty sketchbook that's really holding us back. I think it's the fact that we think too much about the nitty gritty of not just one page, but the whole sketchbook. So if you're like me, we're going to find a subject that makes us feel inspired and fall into the vicious circle I described a minute ago. By just contemplating what the sketchbook could look like, we find a sense of satisfaction and security because we've removed a part of the unknown. And since it takes a few days to plan the whole sketchbook sometimes, we don't even get to start or we get distracted with some other project elsewhere. And what ends up happening when we repeat this habit is we'll lose confidence in our ability to actually do anything and give up. 
And what happened for me in relation to that was that for a long time I was painting on loose sheets of paper. I wanted to paint in sketchbooks really bad and I wasn't doing it. I've been there so many times before and not just for sketchbooks that instead now I encourage myself to act on my idea and excitement rapidly and to not try and think about the next pages and it has worked well. It makes me think of some sayings that say that doers are the ones that succeed and that thinkers will just keep themselves stuck thinking. So I've looked at it in a way that if I do that with each page, then I don't see why I wouldn't be proud of my sketchbook in the end. I would actually be able to finish it and each painting would be executed with the utmost joy and excitement and I would never have to change myself drastically so quickly to manage that. I could still focus on each page to look polished if I wanted to and slowly build that confidence that I can do sketchbooks. And imagine also how much improvement each finished sketchbook would bring in the long term. So I know that as long as a subject pumps me up, that I feel strongly about wanting to paint it, it will be okay and I will enjoy the process. And I know I will do my best to make the art as I would like it to be. And letting this kind of perfectionism in when it's one page at a time, I think it makes it a lot easier to move forward for a perfectionist trying to paint in sketchbooks. And it removes that idea that we're not in the right mindset for a healthy and joyful sketchbook practice. To tell you how I felt when I painted this little dancer, I thought I would manage, but I was slightly scared and doubtful not to because then I was afraid it would ruin my sketchbook experience. So I took the painting itself step by step like I always do for all my paintings and I managed to come out on the other side. If you're a beginner in art and you are feeling intimidating by my paintings now, remember that I'm picking references that feel just a bit challenging to me, but I know I can paint. So please focus on the simple things when you're starting and you can also paint a gorgeous sketchbook. Focus on what you think that is just slightly more challenging that you can handle. If I were to apply my own advice as a beginner, I would probably pick painting fruits because their shape is simple and I would remember to take it one page at a time and only focus on doing my best in that specific moment on that specific page. Now on to my fourth tip. As a perfectionist, my way of controlling and feeling that I was going to be able to craft a great sketchbook was to find a theme that I could weave in the whole sketchbook, kind of like an art book thing. So I would decide either on using just certain colors or just a certain paint brand or just a certain type of reference photo and so on. And I could feel how rigid and limiting this could be, but I did it anyways. And while I think this strategy can be super fun to actually study and experiment with something special, I'd actually encourage anyone to try, but maybe on a short project or a small sketchbook, especially if you're like me or the type to get excited about many things and to kind of want to try different things in a short amount of time. I also find that for a perfectionist, we need to be aware of how much it's okay to narrow down our creative choices. So you got to know yourself and know what works best for you. Because again, if you get easily distracted, and that's totally my case, or that you plan for so long that you won't want to follow through with your original plans, then the best approach is to keep it simple, and again, to take it one page at a time. For me, in this sketchbook, it looks like this so far. So first, this is a mixed media, and it fit for watercolor, so I know I can use several mediums. Then I started with a fish because I found it gorgeous, and I listened to my gut. And my gut told me that I'd like to try watercolor pencils with that one. So I didn't start overthinking that if this is going to be watercolor pencil, then the whole thing should be and so on. So I can call it my watercolor pencil sketchbook. That's what I would have done before. And I consciously decided that this is my whatever I feel like sketchbook and it's working, you guys. So again, I still spend time on each page. I still am careful with my creative choices with each painting. I take the time, I refine, and I add a few details, but lightening this pressure by just not caring about all of the sketchbook makes it easy. Try and assess what you need to feel like completing your sketchbook. 
I decided I'll have this one for everything I want. Then I also have a watercolor sketchbook for everything also. But that one has a summer theme that I know I'll follow through because we're in April. And I know that I'll be painting summer stuff for the next four months, so that shouldn't be a problem. And my sole goal is just to do my best and have fun with each painting or drawing. And for the record, this dancer, I almost thought I had ruined it by adding all the colors to the skin, but I kept pushing and trying and it started coming together a lot better. So I've gained confidence there in knowing that I can fix a failed painting by remaining calm and not giving up. And what I've noticed by doing art so much for the past years is that you can actually fix a lot of paintings. You really can if you just keep at it and you just really start light and you finish with the dark colors. There's a lot of things you can do, so don't be scared if you feel like your painting is not heading in the right place like mine was. You probably can fix it still. I also allowed myself to just color with my pencils in places and not activate the paint. So I have now a fully blended watercolor pencil painting on the first page, a watercolor painting on the second page, and a watercolor pencil one with visible pencil strokes on the third page. And I think I'll try gouache and colored pencils soon, but I haven't given deep thoughts to that yet because you know that's not what I want to do. My next tip is to give yourself a time limit to complete the first few spreads. I find it works wonders for me, and I'm not sure, honestly, everyone will relate to that, but a perfectionist might find it helpful. The key is to find what the motivation is for you to finish by this time limit. For me, it happened last year with my first ever completed sketchbook, and I actually will link the video for that one to watch next. I was painting it for myself after a trip to Spain, and also for a festival in my town. I wanted a creative way to showcase my work, and I finished the sketchbook the day before the festival started. With my current sketchbooks, this one here is also one I'd like to take with me locally to show around, so I have a time limit that is not strict, but it's there. And then I do also have my YouTube videos that I share my tips on and a Patreon in progress that I want to feature tutorials from these sketchbooks in. And that is helping me focus my time and energy on actually finishing the sketchbooks. So for you, it might be something else. Try and see if that will help you or not, if you move forward better with a little bit of pressure or not. It could be that in a month or so you're visiting family and you want to show them what you've been doing in art. So, you know, it could be something like that. I know that these were not the standard tips and some might have even been shocking, but at least it might help people like me. So I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts about this. And you can watch this finished sketchbook video next to see how I managed 22 pages in three weeks. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.